Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, my name is Rick. Normally, my channel is about heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and I also do generator repair. Lately, I've been doing reviews for some of the EcoFlow portable power stations, and today we're going to be comparing the Delta Pro Ultra against the Delta Pro 3. Now, I'm going to be calling the Delta Pro Ultra the DPU from here on out. Same thing for the Delta Pro 3. I'll be referring to it as the DP3. Now, I've already done a full review on the DPU as far as what it has to offer, far as specs and things like that. I just didn't get real deep into the testing. Now, the DP3, I went into the testing and all the specifications both. So I'll have links to both those videos right up above here. So if you're interested in knowing more details than what I cover in this video, feel free to click one of those links up on top and check them both out. So today we're going to be comparing the features and specifications between these two units and what makes each one special. So the DP3 here obviously is smaller in physical size, but it still packs 4,000 watts of clean power and has a built-in battery of 4,000 watt hours. The DPU has no battery built into it because the top section is the inverter section only. And below it, you'll see the battery, which is a 6,000 watt hour battery. Now, for those that are new to the game and don't really know the difference between a watt hour and what a watt is, we'll just do a brief description here. Watt hours is how many watts you can get out of a battery for so many hours. The less you take, the more time you get from the battery. The watts is the amount of power that you can get out of the device to power loads such as your furnace, your refrigerators, and things like that. Now with those things said, let's go ahead and go over some of the basic specs of each one of these. They both are very heavy. They are both portable. Now obviously the DPU is a little bit larger. It obviously weighs a little bit more when you combine the two sections together. The DP3 weighs about 113 pounds. This section here on top is 72 and down below it I think it's 113 pounds. I'll show you in a little bit here what it's like to carry these up and down the stairs because moving around on flat concrete is not a big deal, but when you start climbing stairs and things like that or needing to pack them in your car, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a little difference there. It really depends on what your application is and what you're looking for. Are you gonna keep these mounted pretty much permanently in your van, your house, or on the go? What, what's, what's your need? Everyone's gonna be a little different. So EcoFlow has designed two products here that should be able to fit most people's needs. One of the biggest features that EcoFlow came out with was the 240 volt split phase power. That was a huge improvement for someone like me that's out in the country where I have a well system where I have to power it with a generator usually at 240 volts. These are now capable of doing it with no problem at all. You also are able to run big loads such as your air conditioner. These are rated for right around three tons. It really depends on what your locked rotor amps are. So the DPU can do a locked rotor amps around 120 amps. The DPU is just a little bit lower. The continuous wattage on the DP3 is right around 4,000 watts of clean power, and the DPU can put out 7,200 watts of continuous power. Now, when you add the extra batteries to the two different items, you can increase that capacity quite a bit. The batteries here are usually about truly 6,100 watt hours. You can add up to five batteries to this device, which really increases your power up to about 30,000 watt hours. Whereas the DP3, you can add up to two extra batteries. So when you combine that with the built-in battery, that gives you a total of three batteries, giving you a total of 12,000 watt hours. When you combine this with the Smart Home Panel 2, you're able to combine up to three of the DPUs or three of the DP3s. I know, a lot of words just rambling together. Originally, this video was going to be just on the performance of the DPU, but since it's been out for a little while, and the DP3 was just recently released within the last week or so, and that's the reason why we're gonna go over the differences between the two of them. So down in the comments section, I was asked whether or not these items can run a welder. I don't know, let's find out. All right, for our next test, we're gonna be doing a welding test. For some reason, the viewers have asked, can it do a welder? Well, let's find out. We're gonna first try the 120 volt welder here, the SP135. And if it does that, then we'll go on over here to the Lincoln SP175, which is a 230 volt welder. Okay, did that no problem at all. Let's go ahead and take the heat all the way. Okay, that was maximum. Did it no problem, the DP3. We'll do the 120 volt welder on the DPU. All right, starting off with the DP3, go into the 230 volt welder, holding at 239, pulling 20 watts, no real amp draw yet. Let's go at 50% capacity of the welder first. We'll go to J, which is just under the highest. Yeah, 
I don't think it likes that. So it did not fail out, but it did not like it very well. Now we're on the DPU. But we're gonna start off at 80%. You can definitely hear the difference in the power. I mean, that voltage ain't even slacking at all. You can tell the heat is much higher on that one. Let's go ahead and take her all the way up to a J. Sounds good. All right, so we did a bead there of about two and a half inches. Now we're gonna go ahead and try the air compressor here. This is 230 volts. It has a 15 amp motor on it. Let's see what happens when we flip it on. Should be able to watch the voltage and amperage down in front. Now we're gonna go ahead and do it with the DP3. Will it be able to do it? Survey says, ooh, no it can't. And she locked out and completely cut it out. She went off on an error. So to reset it, we'll go ahead and hit the power button again. Click, boom, we're back to 238. Let's do it one more time. Almost, but no. Well, this right here, is one of the things that really stinks about either one of them is the weight and trying to go down a set of stairs with it is not very fun. I would say the DP3 is a lot easier even though it's still 100 pounds, 113 pounds. DPU is not bad with the inverter, it's only 70 some pounds. But the battery, that's another story. Unless you're in decent shape, you're gonna have a few problems with it. And I could possibly drop it and then lose $3,000 battery. The DP3 here can actually go up to 21,000 plus watts of continuous power, whereas the DP3 can go up to a total of 12,000 watts. So that allows you enough room to compete with your gas generators. Like I said, both devices are capable of running a smart home panel 2, a generator inlet box, or a manual transfer switch, whichever one fits your budget. What I'm also gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and power some different appliances in the house to see whether or not they can run them. Me personally, I have no desire to run an electric water heater or a actual electric dryer off of these, but what you're gonna do is see that it can actually do it or not. Now I have one of my studio lights here plugged into one of the outlets here that is on the transfer switch. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show that this can do the automatic transfer over in 20 milliseconds. Now, although the DP3 actually has a 10 millisecond switch over time, you're limited to the 20 milliseconds that the Smart Home Panel 2 has. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kill the grid. You're gonna see a slight blink. That is how fast this switch is over. Now, a Generac generator takes on average about 10 seconds before it even starts to crank. Then after it cranks, it has to stabilize usually for five to 10 more seconds. So you're usually 25 seconds to as much as 45 seconds, depending on whether or not that generator starts. If you've seen any of my other videos, a lot of the reasons why I'm making the video is because it didn't start. People didn't even know that they were having issues. So with this being in the house, I've noticed that my portable generators, I've had very few problems with them because they're out of the weather. When things set outside in the weather, mice get into it, the weather gets into it, things just go wrong, things get forgotten, like batteries going dead was probably one of the biggest thing. So that's just something to consider when you're choosing whether or not you wanna go with a power station, such as what we're doing a review on today, or whether you wanna go with, say, a home standby generator like you have from Generac. Now on switchback, it should be about as quick there it went back to it, just like that. Now we're gonna show that the DPU can do the same thing. Grab that, move it out of the way. Now we're gonna take our plug, go ahead and plug it into the side of the DP3. Go ahead and turn it back on. You heard some clicking there, letting it know that it's ready to go. She's ready to go. All right, so here we go. Uh-oh. There we go. Now that everything's kind of synced together, sometimes you will have a delay like that. So let's go ahead and kill it again. There it happened. For whatever reason, when you first switch them over, it seems like they gotta get connected. It doesn't say anything in the book about it, but sometimes that does happen. Either way, the longest it usually takes is about five seconds for it to switch over. And then once it's ready to go and it's established, 
it's not such a big deal. You gotta understand, this is actually communicating more than just power through these cables. There's actually multiple different pins in there, and it's actually keeping track of the amperage, it's keeping track of the voltage. There's a lot going on in here besides just sending power to it like you would with a generic inlet box here on the side of the breaker panel. Now, when we do our testing on the dryer and the water heater and things like that, we're gonna go through the inlet box because I don't have those things on my actual transfer switch because to me, they're not a priority. Once again, still working just fine. Furnace is running, no problem at all. All right, before we get started into the testing, I'm gonna do a quick disclaimer right now. I'm gonna be doing work inside of the panels. There is 240 volts inside here. It can kill you. I do not recommend you get into any of your panels or do anything on your own unless you're certified or you know what you're doing. Either way, that's up to you to make that decision, not me. I don't want anyone to get hurt because they've seen what I've done in here. Like I said, I'm a heating, air conditioning, refrigeration tech that pretty much works on 460 volts on a routine basis. You've got to respect electricity, not fear it. So with that being said, you've been warned, don't do it. Hire an electrician, have it done for you. Depending on where you live at, you may need a permit or you may need to have things inspected. So make sure you just have it ran through your electrician and then you won't have nothing to worry about. Okay, what I've done is I've went ahead and turned the thermostat on so it's calling. However, I have the 240 volt breaker turned off so that we could be down here when it does kick on. Out in my two and a half ton heat pump, I do have a hard start, which is similar to a soft start. It's basically a capacitor start that lowers the starting amperage of the unit. They're a little bit cheaper than a soft start, but you can add those to your heat pump or AC unit to help start the unit a little bit easier, and it lowers the starting amperage. Forty-seven point nine amps right there. We'll turn that inrush off. Our total running load amps on just the outside unit is seven point nine amps. So as you can see, there's nearly a five times the amount of amperage to get it started and going. That is an inductive load. That is a load that comes in strong and then backs away, whereas a resistive load just comes on and stays there. As you can see, we're holding right in there at 60.1 hertz and our sine wave is clean. Now we have the DP3 hooked up. We'll go ahead and switch the breaker. Switch to right over, just like it should. Like I said, sometimes it does that blank out thing, but once it's ready to go, it's, it's synced and ready to go. Down there at the bottom, you can see we're running right at 932 watts. We're on the DP3. Let's go ahead and turn on the heat pump. You should be able to see our inrush down here at the bottom. Got your scope and you got your voltage. It did it. Came in at 37.2. You could see it did a little bit of a dip uh, I did not allow it time to really equalize both sides of the pressure, so it makes it a lot harder on the system. But like I said, I got a hard start on there. If you add a soft start, which is usually a $300 plus add-on, sometimes more, sometimes less, that will reduce the starting amperage and it would allow you to start possibly a bigger air conditioner or heat pump. Same ordeal here, running right at 60 hertz and 7.6 amps. As you can see there, our sine wave is perfectly smooth. We're right at 60.1 to 60.0, which is perfect. In the United States, we run a 60 hertz sine wave. What that means is it cycles up and down a total of 60 times per second. Now that we've shown that the frequency has stayed steady, I'm not going to continue to put this in here because I don't want it to fall. All right, let's go ahead and switch this back to utility. Now we're gonna run some of the other heavy loads off of the actual generator inlet box. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the X boost is already defeated when it's hooked to the Smart Panel 2. Whenever you're connected directly to Delta Pro 3 or the Delta Pro Ultra, you have a few features that are not gonna be available when you're hooked into the Home Panel 2. One of those is gonna be your front plugs are gonna be disabled. So right now we've got to completely unhook from the actual Smart Panel. And then to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. Now that we have the smart home panel disconnected, we can turn on our 230 volt. Now here's something that you need to know that the 120 volt or 230 volt, take your pick one or the other. Now you could make a breakout box where you take this 230 volt because it does have a neutral in there in the ground and you make yourself a plug so that you basically have either four of these uh, that could be plugged off that or you could put another junction box beside it and you could do different uh, arrangements like that. But generally you're gonna either be running a transfer switch manual transfer switch, smart home panel, or an inlet box. So for right now, we're gonna go ahead and switch off the utility. Everything just went dead. 
we're gonna turn on the actual power supply here and it just powered up. You can hear the fan just kicked on because we're pulling 2,900 watts. My breaker box, the way it's wired, I have a 100 amp breaker actually powering my transfer switch. Right now, it still is getting power as if it's in the utility. It don't really know the difference because of the way I'm doing it. Now, if I want to do full bore, uh, let the switch know that I'm in generator power so that it can monitor that and keep track of it, I would want to switch off my actual switch here on the transfer switch up at the top, flip that off, and then flip it over to our generator because I actually have a generator section here so that if I want to do it full bore, I can actually do that based off of the way that panel is wired up. Now, because it's been running for a while, it actually has got the fan running a little bit louder than normal. We're running right here at 900 and some watts. Here's the SPL meter, right about 51 dB, which isn't really bad, um, but you know, it's definitely quieter than the original Delta Pro. Now this does only have, I think, two to four fans inside of it. The Delta Pro Ultra has a total of six. The Delta Pro Ultra is gonna come in nearly silent because it doesn't even need to run the fans when the load's under 2000 watts uh, for up to the first, I think, 20 minutes or whatever. So it's pretty darn quiet, but it's also more expensive. My elements on my electric water heater are 4100 watts at 208 or 5,500 watts at 240. So it's actually more than what this DP3 can actually run. So this is where we're gonna to wanna to turn on our actual X boost to be able to run it. So we can see that we're still running right around 238 volts. We've got the heat pump turned off. I was going to try to run the water heater here. So it's, gonna, it's not gonna be able to run the water heater. It's not built for it. It really is gonna have an issue with it. The dryer, we might be able to get away with it. Let's just go ahead and try the dryer. You can see we're still plugged into it. I just turned X Boost on. We're gonna go ahead and try to run the dryer. I went ahead and turned the furnace off so that we aren't pulling anything on it to try to conserve power. I don't want to damage anything in the house. So I don't really recommend doing this um, just because I'm purposely overloading it. I've got the water heater turned off. I've got the air compressor turned off. I've got the barn turned off. So let's go ahead and turn on the dryer and see what kind of amperage we get. All right, as you can see there, the dryer took it out and so it was not able to handle it. It can't run a dryer. I'm not even gonna waste my time on a water heater. It's over the capacity of what it's rated for, so it's just kind of common sense to me, but I wanted to at least show whether X Factor could handle it or not, and obviously it can't. We're gonna go ahead and just call that quits on that. Well pump, all that stuff's no big deal. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the DPU. We are now plugged into the DPU. We're pulling 1300 watts. Let's go ahead and see if it can handle that dryer. Let's go ahead and turn that dryer back on. Let's uh, set the end rush. We'll see how bad this is. I did have that on medium heat. I'm not a true expert on dryers, so don't know if that means it just runs more or if it actually brings on more heater elements. But we're gonna see if we can get an end rush reading here on the actual amp clamp. You can see the voltage measurement there on the top. We're not a perfect uh, 240 volts and 60 hertz on the money. You got 3,200 more watts of continuous power out of this unit. It's nearly double. So let's go ahead and see what it can do here with the dryer. And here we go. Let's go ahead and hit play. There it's running. Our inrush is right at 41 amps. Let's go ahead and see what our regular amperage is. So as you can see there, we're pulling 20, almost 25 amps on just the dryer alone. When you come down here to the DPU, you can see that we're running 6,558 watts of output. So we still have a total of about 700 more watts to go. Now, this is obviously going to kill this thing pretty quickly. You'll have about 37 more minutes out of this. So this is the reason why it's not even logical to try to run your dryer. You would need to have solar as your backup and uh, it's kind of a no-brainer there. As far as your actual water heater, all right, there we go. The water heater just kicked on. You can see we dropped to 238, which is very respectable. You can see our amp meter down there at the bottom. We're running right at 21 amps, 22 amps. Jumping back here to the DPU, it was running 6,500. For some reason, it's cycling it on and off. I don't know why. It's an electronic uh, control. There it is, 6,400 watts. It's holding really good on the actual voltage. Let's check frequency, right there's 60 hertz. You would be lucky if you got 37 minutes out of it if you're going to pull that much power out of it once. Now, one thing you may have noticed 
that you couldn't hear the fans running, even when it was pulling 6,000 watts. It's got so much headroom there and so much cooling capacity. There the fans just finally came on. You can see the little icon there spinning to kind of show you that it's actually running. We're at 1,200 watts. I can't hear anything. Right now I've got the blower turned off. We can turn on the SPL meter. That was the lowest it got down to, which was 39. 30, I think, is what they got it rated at. Obviously, this is not calibrated, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, I have compared it against other ones that were calibrated, so it's pretty darn close. EcoFlow recommends that you have an electrician install it. I installed this myself. Um, as you can see, I ran all the same colors, which obviously some electricians would uh, kind of gawk at that. But every one of my wires are actually labeled. I did use the double up breakers here. Uh, because that I have them balanced out, which is something I covered in one of my other videos. Uh, one of the benefits of the uh, EcoFlow system here is installation cost is a lot cheaper um, because you don't have a whole lot going on with the installation. It's kind of plug and play for the most part, and you can pretty much build it once uh, you've got everything installed to whatever size you want by adding extra batteries or, you know, adding an extra actual inverter system. Whether you use the Smart Home Panel 2, which gives you up to three inputs, or whether you use their 50 amp hub that gives you two inputs, uh, that's your options basically to expand your system without having to pay someone to come out and do a bunch of different electrical work. One thing that was really big on the Delta Pro 3 was the fact that it's actually 230 volt split phase without two units. That's something that they did not have before. Uh, basically what you're seeing here with the Ultra is the fact that it is a bigger system, it's more powerful, it's their Cadillac series basically. It's got all the bells and whistles. If you don't mind spending more money, I would go with that unit just because it's got everything under the sun. Now if you need it to be portable and move around, then by all means I would go with the Delta Pro 3 just because it's smaller and it's a little easier to carry around. I do have an extra battery for that which I did show in the review so you can check that out. Like I said, the links are up above and down below. Now one thing I do want to mention about both devices, they are capable of having an input of 120 volts charging the system, but being able to output 240 volts out while the battery is still running. So as long as there's battery power in there, it's actually able to provide 240 volts out while still only being charged with 120. The EcoFlow app is definitely excellent. I covered that in the other review videos, so make sure you check that out if you want more information. You can save a lot of money on all the EcoFlow products during the Prime Days. Here in July of 2024, Prime Days is going on. It's gonna be some of the best sales of the season with the EcoFlow. Check out my discount and coupon codes down below in the link and description area so you can save more money, plus you'll help support the channel. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe because I will continue to do more and more reviews on the EcoFlow products and whatever products that I find to be of interest possibly to my viewers. I will be doing a review on the EcoFlow Smart Generator, which is able to charge the EcoFlow products by direct DC coupling. So that's going to be something really fun and exciting for me to do here probably next month. So once again, consider subscribing if you would. If you would, hit that like button. And until next time, guys, catch you on the next one.